Hey everyone, welcome back to Cothcast, the show where we talk about anything and everything. Today's guest is Ragehound. Hey guys. So, uh, so yeah, how you doing? Um, actually doing okay. Uh, it's kind of busy. It's holiday, so um, I haven't done any videos in like a month or so. But that's probably mm. gonna change in 2018 when I get a new computer. Yay! Oh, okay, yeah, uh, nice. Um, actually, why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to uh, my audience and you know tell everyone who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Ragehound. Um, you may or may not have seen me. I often do my videos in cupcake, my pink suit. Um, I like to do a very weird mixed bag of videos. Um, I do do drama downloads and sometimes try to cover topics that are picking up steam in the community, but really what I just like to do is find video topics that aren't being done as much or try to do some educational stuff that maybe could help younger furries. But I kind of cover a wide gamut and I am kind of a very different channel from you, Cathar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, you, you know, as a, like, a fursuit YouTuber, you actually do a lot more serious videos than a lot of people. I would say that you've done several videos that are kind of similar to the videos I do, so I don't know if we're that different. Yeah, the way I like to think of it is, I mean, there's plenty of amazing suitors that, or suit fur tubers that do... Your standard, like, four things I learned in the fandom, or five great ways to make friends, or things you find at cons. And the fact is, like, there's so many good videos on that already. I, I don't really see my sloppy editing adding anything to that. So <laughs> I, en I tend to lean towards some of the video topics you do or kind of trying to get my own perspective on it because mm -hmm. they're just more interesting to film and... Honestly, it just gets really boring trying to find listicles of things that furries do because we're pretty niche and you do run out fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I. You know, there's people like uh, Majira or Rika who do almost all their videos are are things like that, like uh, something to do with the furry fandom and something kind of light and silly. And it's like, I, man, I I run out of <laughs> I'd run out of things so fast. I have no idea how to do videos like that. I mean, I certainly started with a few, but I kind of, as I started making them, I realized that they already existed. Uh -huh. So I did my favorite fursuit dancers because that is actually part of what brought me into the fandom in a big way. Like I knew what it was and I knew there were people in it, but I never actually tried to jump in head first. And uh -huh. watching video after video from different conventions of these dance comps kind of made me go, ah! I could I could hang with these people, uh -huh. and then that kind of got me going to cons. Not not many. When I say cons, I mean MFF, and I went three times. But oh, okay. cons. <laughs> yeah. So so MFF is the only one that you frequently go to. Yeah, that's actually the only one with my work schedule that I can actually do. I do EDC, which is a EDM rave uh -huh. um, concert thing, and that one I I usually book. January 1 of the previous year to make sure that I can actually get all of the arrangements down. But MFF is kind of the only one I've gone to. And then after, you know, some of the things we've heard at different cons throughout the year with different incidents happening, I, it's kind of the, the only like group of staff that I've ever felt really comfortable coming back to. Uh -huh. I have thought about AnthroCon, but from what I've heard, it's just very big. But yeah. I guess now I can't say that because MFF's attendance this year beat them. So oh, I can't really? use that excuse anymore. I, I think so. Don't directly quote me, but I believe we had a, at least a couple hundred more in attendance, if not a couple thousand. But I would have to fact check that. Oh, that's I don't really like interesting. Anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it kind of wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Anthrocon has been kind of going downhill uh, ever since this new like board of directors started you know, barring people from speaking and banning people for stuff they did that is, like, not even, not not anything they did at the con, just, like, because they said something on Twitter that, uh, that the board of directors didn't like. It's like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, I mean, while I certainly have my opinions on the person who was not allowed to speak, uh -huh. and I I personally was okay with the fact that they weren't allowed to speak. I also have to take myself, I have to step back from it and realize it's also not about me. And I'm sure there were people in the community who would have wanted him to speak. 
So while I certainly wouldn't have gone if he had, and I wasn't all that bothered that he couldn't, it also it is a bit selfish because realistically that's not something that caters to me, and I'm sure there's a part of the community that would have appreciated it. Yeah, you know, he gets uh, several hundred people seeing his show every time. He's been a staple of the convention, and uh, it, it's just weird that it's just really odd to me. Uh, you, know, you know, especially since he's uh, Kage's friend, it's like, and Kage's like the CEO of, of Anthrocon or whatever. It's so, yeah. It's so bizarre. I don't, get, I don't really get how cons do all that. Like, I obviously, I mean, if you ever have picked up an MFF pamphlet for the last two years, I'm technically down as a social media person that does things. Uh-huh. Which is to say, I just like give advice on like advertising and marketing and stuff. I'm not very involved right now just because my job's crazy, but I don't really understand how all of that breaks down, and that's probably why I'm not on any board of anything for anything at all. Uh-huh. But it does always kind of confuse me a little, like what people choose to ban and what people choose to be okay with. But then it is a private event, so I guess they can make that decision. But it just is a little weird. Yeah, no, yeah, you, you're definitely right. It's a private event, so I, you know, I can't, I can't complain too much. Uh, it, yeah, it, it's just, it's just so strange, and we have this, this new kind of, uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's like pure democracy, basically, where uh, you vote on on who is allowed to do things and what is not allowed to happen based on twitter yeah although it's weird because certain one thing that i saw is certain cons do it differently like some cons will go off of media clamor and be like okay you really don't want this guy gotcha Mm -hmm. And then others will make just very bizarre choices for even just programming. One thing I noticed this year at some cons is depending on which person was handling programming, you had a very radically different cho- like group of choices. So a con that's maybe younger, newer, has a less, I don't know, less old group of directors who maybe is more active on social Mm -hmm. would take a look and see what people were saying and incorporate that into programming. And I won't throw shade in any particular direction, but some of the panels that were picked for some cons where they weren't as socially active and really didn't use her as much came off as bizarre and just very out of touch. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to recall exactly what con, but there was one where some panels were duplicates or appeared to be duplicates or the same topic was being covered by multiple people. And that to me just seems strange. Yeah, that's a little bit odd. Um, I'm I'm going to go to Anthrocon uh, next year. And uh, yeah, well, it'd probably be this year by the time this podcast comes out. But I'm going to go to Anthrocon and... uh, I want to get like a furry YouTuber panel together, but I'm not sure if they're gonna like allow that because I'm on it. <laughs> so, well, you know how you fix that, right? How's that? So, if you're afraid that, that it won't get approved because you know maybe some of your videos are a bit spicy or mm-hmm. have opinions that some people don't like, the easiest way to solve that is get a bunch of other YouTubers to apply with you, and mm-hmm. you know take it from a place of, you know, we're going to cover the full spectrum of furry YouTubers. Yeah. So you get to hear every side. Or if, you know, they're being angsty about it, just have multiple people apply <laughs> for a YouTuber panel and just join with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's Back what I'm trying to do. But uh, since no one wants to, like, take the head on this, I'm going to be the one that's organizing the panel. So, uh yeah, I don't I don't know. I, I gotta try to find someone else to organize it or something. And kinda yeah. sneak my name on the list there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sadly I don't think I could organize because frankly you've seen my videos, I can't organize anything. But <laughs> but if I had the means and you got it together, I would be more than happy to come down and talk because I have no idea why I have twelve thousand subscribers. That is a mystery to me. But <laughs> be more than happy to drag their butts out to a panel. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, are you able, you said you your schedule doesn't permit other cons. I mean, would you even be able to go to Anthrocon? Um, potentially. What what happened in previous years is the way my scheduling usually worked was it was a standard, you know, you get two weeks or in one case you get one week, <laughs> which was bullshit. But um, with this one, it's actually hours worked and they actually accumulate. So I would just have to pull a lot of overtime and I could probably swing it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly in 2018 what on earth I want to do. I know I've got at least one more EDC in me, so I'm going this year. And I do want to come back for MFF because that was such a positive experience this year. But if I can get another couple of weeks approved, I could probably at least do a few days of the con. And it's not like the problem with most cons is they are so far in cost preventative. So as uh -huh. a New Yorker, trying to get out to all of these cons in like California or middle of nowhere, like somewhere in the middle of the map, it's really expensive to get a flight from here. But uh -huh. for Anthrocon, it's in Pittsburgh and that's not yeah. that far. Yeah, it's only like probably like a six or seven hour drive from you, huh? If I had a car. So with a train. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't drive. So if, yeah, when if I took the train, it's, it's a pretty straight shot. I could at least get to Philly and then figure it out from there. I have plenty of suitors in that area that could probably, like, bum my ass to the con. So that one's pr pretty easy to, to manage as yeah. opposed to, like, the other ones that are also big. You know, I didn't even think about a train. It's only five hours for me, so... I probably would be better off driving as far as expense goes, but I didn't even think about a train. I forgot that that mode of transportation exists. It's it's funny how you forget you forget that depending on where you live because mm -hmm. I literally had to drive someone's car to the store at Midwest and it took me a full 20 minutes to remember how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, which one is Accelerate? They're like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, I don't drive cars, okay? I use Lyft. <laughs> yeah, well, you live in New York, so it's kind of not, uh, it, it's kind of not feasible to drive a lot of the time, right? Uh, depending on where you are, I've definitely got some friends that live out in the other boroughs that manage it pretty well, Queens, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. uh, Harlem, but... When you're smack dab in Manhattan, the parking fees alone would just completely make it useless. And the subway systems, those shit, are pretty effective to get you to and from where you need to go. So you don't really need one. Mm, yeah. I mean, the only subway I've ever been on is uh, in Washington, D.C. They have a metro. So. Ugh, their metro, though. Ugh. What, the, what about the metro? It's so clean. I just, I look at what we have and I'm like, I would be willing to pay so much higher taxes if we could just fix ours a little bit and make it a mm. bit cleaner. There's a few new cars, but whew, I don't know if you've read it in the news, but like our MTA is like really needs an overhaul. It's, it's not good. I've heard that it's like incredibly confusing and there's all kinds of weird cancellations and schedule changes all the time. So it's hard to get anywhere. I mean, it's not so much that like there's scheduling changes, but it, it's it's very rare that there is not at least one line delayed a day. And oh my gosh. when there's an incident, like, it does kind of choke up traffic. And I don't mind what people think of our current person in charge, but when he visits, mm -hmm. ooh, it is miserable to try to get to work on time. Um, they shut down stuff and God help you if you accidentally got in a cab and forgot because you'll be sitting in traffic for a while. But like the, mm. the trains do get wonky, especially when weather changes. Like if it rains, most tracks are fine, but you'll, you'll figure out which ones are the oldest by which lines constantly break the most like the oh four gosh. five and the nqr are hilariously unreliable and that's the only way i get to work so <laughs> <laughs> wow, you kind of just sucks. get used to it you get used to it at one point you're like oh my train's delayed by an hour okay. <laughs> I, I gotta ask though uh why new york mm, good question so i actually went to college down in baltimore mm -hmm. not too far from probably where you've experienced the metro but Oh, no, yeah, uh, that's, that's right near me, Baltimore is. 
Yeah, so I went to school down there, and when I graduated with, you know, communications and wanted to do a very, at the time, new um, job opportunities, Facebook marketing wasn't really, it was a thing, but, like, not a big thing at that time. You were still getting the smallest budget because no one knew what the fuck to do with it. Um, I tried to get hired, and no one was hiring in Baltimore for that. Like, I could probably get more of a traditional job, but... I had zero luck. I came out of college and there was like nothing. So, yeah. yeah. So I applied to major cities because I figured, well, social media marketing is not really something someone in a small town in Alabama is going to give a shit about. So let's try all the big cities. So New York was the first one to call me back. So I just picked up everything and moved. And it was expensive as shit, but I had a job. No kidding. Uh, So you, okay, so, so you actually have a job related to your college degree. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I that's kind of rare, you know. Or like, like you said, you got out and there's no one around who uh, who had a job for you based on that. Yeah, I've I've found with a lot of people like, I that's why I wanted to do educational videos on my channel. You you learn weird hacks for that uh-huh. through trial and error. And since I've already gone through it, if there's anyone that needs wants or needs to go through that, like dance of trying to figure stuff out and get a job actually in the field you want. I can't guarantee that it'll work, but one thing I've found from talking to furries and even some non-furries is people just don't know how to do some of those different routes and, you know, little hacks that you can do to get a better chance of getting into that. Mm -hmm. I know most people that I went to college with were English majors, and um, or my friends were English majors and I was one until my last two semesters where I noticed that I was like, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm just going to switch. Um, yeah. English major. What is that? How do you even get a job? Like a, you become like an editor or something? Like what is that? So traditionally people will tell, you know, you can write books, you can write novels, you can write poetry, or you could be a professor. But you know, if you hate kids and you don't really want <laughs> to write a book, I don't like children. I uh-huh. like children I've met. I don't like children I that are screaming at me. Um, if you're, if that's the only thing that, you know, traditional schooling has told you you can do, you're going to be disappointed and you're probably going to go looking for a McDonald's or a Starbucks or something that's you know, going to keep the the lights on, but you won't necessarily know what to look for while you're doing that. And yeah. with an English major, you could be a marketing copywriter. You could be an editor. You could actually go work for something like a HuffPost and kind of transition over into journalism. Mm-hmm. Heck, you could do, um, you could do the script writing for an, the next indie game. There's a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. that People don't okay. realize they can do, but you can do. It's just a little bit trickier. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of degrees that I kind of question the utility of. Uh, it's one yeah. of the reasons why I didn't go to college. Well, I did go to college for about two years, and then in the army, I, uh, I, I would say, got about. Well, I got about thirty credits worth of, um shit but it's like all military only stuff so it's like kind of useless too (laughs) i I have a bunch of like one of the one of the funniest jokes i ever had is one of my friends was navy and just like oh i don't think i have i can't i don't know how i applied this to my civilian life and i'm like Mm. really how because you basically know nuclear reactor science why don't you just go apply to do something in that no oh I was just yeah. thinking about the whole gun cleaning shit. I'm like, yeah, you can clean a you can clean a gun <laughs> real good. Gun. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's that. I mean, yeah. Pretty much anyone from the military could become like a, a police officer or something related to that. A lot of people do like sort of guard duty type stuff because mm-hmm. it's uh, it's easy and it's yeah, people will just hire you right off the bat. It's like, okay, you're in the military. Like half of what you do is you know when you're not deployed, half of what you do is just guard things so so why not um for me it's a little bit weirder because mostly what i had to do was uh, or what i i guess went to school for was uh like making maps basically Mm -hmm. um that you know showed like uh troop movement and things and i don't know how much of a uh 
outside of the military, if that is very useful. <laughs> oh, you could actually use that as a social engineer and be on a project for buildings like World Trade Center and identify mm -hmm. weak points that can be reinforced. For making maps? Well, if you're used to tracking troop movement, you could just translate troops to foot traffic around certain monuments and then identify places where the foot traffic would be extremely high and might need more security. Oh, oh uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways you can kind of think about it. Like, I think the funniest thing I ever found out was one of my friends who was a drill sergeant ended up going to, like, a like a men or a boys boarding school as like a mm -hmm. headmaster <laughs> basically because he was so good at getting people's butts in line they hired him to just do that <laughs> right oh my god i was like okay so you're straightening up kids in school he goes yeah and i fucking hate kids so it's great <laughs> i was like oh my <laughs> god so yeah you can you can there's more creative routes than people give themselves credits for, because people will be like, oh, I don't have the skill for that. I'm like, really? You have the skill for this? Why don't you try that? And most people don't think of it that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could think about it more abstractly, I guess. I, I don't, you know, I never really knew what I wanted to do, which is one of the reasons why I dropped out of college in the first place. So I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to end up getting a degree and, uh, it's not going to serve me. It's just going to be a waste of money and time. Yeah, that's. Know? I feel like that's a common feeling now, especially, I mean, maybe previously when there was not as much access to the Internet, although who knows, we might be going back into that. Um, <laughs> when there wasn't as much access to the Internet, yeah, it was conceivable that you did have to go to college to get a job or trade school or mm -hmm. apprenticeship. But now I don't think you necessarily have to go to quote unquote college because there are so many schools of thought that you can visit without paying tuition. Your tuition is basically your Wi-Fi bill every month now. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've tried explaining this to people and they don't they don't like get it. I think because they want to kind of like think that their college degree was is like the end all thing. Like my dad is like that. He has a he has a master's degree in um like dirt or something. Uh uh, environmental sustainability, <laughs> right? Which is like a very like niche field, <laughs> environmental sustainability. Uh, so yeah, basically he, he's got a, uh, a master's degree in like dirt science or something. And he's always talking about how he went to college and how like proud he is of that. And, and I'm like trying to tell him like, okay, well, I don't need to go to college to like study the things that I want to study. Like I may not know about as much about dirt as you do, but I like. Don't I don't think care. anyone knows about as much about dirt as he probably does. <laughs> yeah, has a degree so, in dirt. <laughs> well, yeah, essentially. Uh, and so it's like it's really strange to try to explain to him like all the knowledge is out there. I mean, the only thing that school is good for is kind of having a professor to uh, like direct you on what to read but you're still reading all that stuff on the internet so it's like if i knew that schedule uh, i could do my degree without ever going to a classroom or talking to a professor yeah i do find what it's very strong in and what school what traditional schooling is exceptionally effective in is very very specialized high skill no you cannot do an online webinar for this you physically need to be there kind mm -hmm. of study like yeah medical. yeah I, Hands I don't on. yeah right ever going away um technical computing i think that actually is being handled incredibly well um in less traditional settings i don't know if you're familiar but they have um code academy and general yeah. assembly in new york those are excellent programs yeah yeah code academy um i tried there for a while uh uh, I, I would say coding is not my forte, but uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, but it's it's good and it's accessible. Um, mm -hmm. But like certain things, like historical reference for things is great if you want to get into politics. So mm -hmm. as much as people want to shit on women's studies, I don't see taking a class or two as a bad thing if you have to debate with someone who has that mindset. It's actually yeah. not bad. But yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a really good point, yeah. So, I mean, I would never major in it, but <laughs> I would certainly take a few classes 
and then go into a political field. I mean, some of the some of the things that I've seen now that are actually really, really amazing and I, I wish more people would take advantage of is you have all of these incredible fursuit makers making gorgeous suits. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them critically have never taken a business development class. And that kills me because fursuit business is probably a little bit different, but everyone mm-hmm. always says like, oh, you're pricing it too low or oh, it's too expensive or oh, you know, their customer service is terrible, but it's like, oh, my God, you guys make the most beautiful art. I just wish you would invest, like, a little bit of time into learning how to accurately estimate costs, like having scenarios where, okay, like, let me rationalize and think about how this situation would play out before it happens with a real customer. Like, one of the things that makes me so happy is there's a new fursuit maker that actually I've been talking to um, I think it's like Tapa Pat, Tapa Pat Creations or something. Mm-hmm. Um, really smart French girl. She's about to launch her business, and she absolutely blew me away. She went to a business development conference. She is taking a class on how to accurately price and do like budget estimations and like you know understand how to manage overhead. And she's going to go into market with all of the expertise that I think a lot of current fursuit makers would absolutely benefit from and i'm just so excited i'm like yes you're doing it you're doing it right (laughs) yeah you know actually i would uh i would say that's the best way to go about it you know a lot of people go to college for something maybe they're not even sure what they want but they get a degree and then they try to find a job based on it and i would say uh, like like what you're talking about a better thing to do would be to get a job and then go to school to uh try to yeah yeah supplement that job or improve in it or or something to that effect Uh, my mom actually did that she uh is an accountant at this uh, military contractor and she went to you know she worked there for like 10 years and then she to advance she needed to take some uh, like actual you know like accounting college classes and uh and things like that and so that was like oh you know that's a that's a really smart way of going to school uh, it's harder though, because then you have to work and go to school at the same time. But you know, it's. I mean, but that's the hustle that you would be in after you got out of college anyway. So why not just get it over yeah. with to start? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I say that, and I went to a four-year overpriced private school to basically oh, find boy. out I didn't want to do English, but still, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Sometimes it's just having that little piece of paper that. Um, that matters too like in the military to be an officer you have to have a degree in something it doesn't matter what just something like they it will never come up it doesn't help you at all but uh <laughs> you gotta have it for some reason yeah i mean i find that like with a lot of traditional um places to work to that the idea that you know thou shalt have um a degree or your resume is invalid is still very persistent and that Mm -hmm. that kills me because some of the smartest people that i've worked with at my company are literally crazy ass developers who learned how to code because they got bored one night and went into website coding and tried to replicate their favorite like website or tried Mm -hmm. to program a thing because they were experiencing something that annoyed them and they wanted to fix it and i I'm fairly confident that the three guys that literally are my oh shit buttons when something breaks on the tool I use have never been in a college classroom ever, Mm. which is nuts. Yeah, uh, no, uh, with computer stuff, that's exactly what happens. Like all the, all the, the the game developers that make these indie games that, that sell, you know, millions of copies. uh, Do you think any of them went to like a video game development school, you know? Um, like they're all people that that I'm started sure they off didn't, just... they didn't get a major and get a degree but i wouldn't be surprised if they saw a new emerging trend in gaming mm-hmm. that they critically didn't know how to do and booked a class real fast uh maybe but i mean a lot of them just uh, what they did to get started was make mods for other games like yeah, you definitely. know pubg is pubg is really huge right now and it has been for a while, and uh, the the guy who did that, uh, I can't remember his name, but it obviously player unknown is his screen name. He started by making a mod for a different game that basically was PUBG or what PUBG became or is based off of, you know. Um, 
that that's how it goes with a lot of them. They make they just make mods to existing games. That's how they get like introduced to coding, and then they just make like a game based off of their mod of the other game, and then it's like they're, then now they're a video game developer. Now they're making who knows how much money, and they never went to school. And the same thing for YouTubers. You know how many YouTubers went to school for I don't know YouTubing or or some shit. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the thing that's really funny is we actually did have like a film mm-hmm. major at our college, but what uh, what kind of annoys me with some systems like that is a lot of the ones I see is just like okay, great, you have these professors who have film studies backgrounds and. You know, maybe you have, like, some guy that's done production on a thing, but, like, there's no funnel. So when you get your degree, you just kind of get rudely kicked down. It's like, okay, now what? But what was mm-hmm. really amazing about our college is they had a very, very strong partnership with Baltimore Sun and local TV stations because one of our alums basically founded her own PR agency, is okay. really, really friendly with the locals, and another professor is, like, a media critic for the Baltimore Sun. Um you would like him. He's opinionated and he's bald. And he was also <laughs> my advisor. <laughs> so when mm, I told okay. him I hate English, I don't think I want to do journalism, and I certainly don't want to do film or radio, what the hell do I do? He just kind of looked at my phone and was just like, have you considered, like, social media? I'm like, is that a job? And he goes, well, if it isn't, you should go make it one. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and there's people like, like I, don't, I don't know exactly what you do with your, you know, social media job, but uh, you could even be like, what I was thinking is like a social media manager for like celebrities or something. Ding, ding. I've done that before. Yeah. You've done that before? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That would be, man, I could actually use some advice on that because I need like a social media manager. I don't know how you to You don't use... need one. You can become one. It's very, it's, it's not very easy, but like it's. It's actually not as hard as process as people think. What mm-hmm. I do now, I don't actually handle anyone's daily postings. Like with my clients, you're never going to see me writing the post that you see that day. But mm-hmm. what I ended up doing is I did the paid side. So the marketing, the ads, um, yeah, the things yeah. that make you buy the thing, sign up for the thing. That's what I largely handle. And the weirdest part of it is the one thing I wish I had studied in college and I did not do because I did not think I would ever use it is um, economics and business and advanced math because Mm, what what people don't realize is when people say like oh yeah I'm in like social media it's a a lot of math (laughs) oh yeah yeah, because you're because you're looking at statistics like analytics of Mm -hmm. traffic and things yeah yeah I can imagine I had to craft Uh, course that after college I was like oh damn I should have done it while I was in college (laughs) yeah that is definitely something that uh that I could use uh like my problem is that I don't really understand what to do for exposure Uh right like like people I put ads on things uh, I put ads on Facebook. Um, obviously, YouTube serves as like an ad uh, in, in itself because you get your videos thrown up on the like trending sections and things. Mm-hmm. And people's, but you know, there's a whole algorithm to that that I don't understand. Uh, there's you know where you post, what time of day you post, uh, mm-hmm. what you post, what's relevant, you know, all that shit. And it's like oh, that shit baffles me. I don't know what to do. Recently, I put an ad up on E621. Uh, cause I figured that, 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 that would get some traffic. Yeah. Smart yeah. You think so? <laughs> yeah. That's why it always makes me laugh when people are just like, well, or I won't name names, but a certain grouping of the YouTube variety get really angry when goofballs like me get lots of subscribers and they don't mm-hmm. know why. And on the back end of my computer, I'm just giggling and I'm like, guys, you literally could have more subs than me. You're just not exposing at the right times to the right people on the right platforms right yeah exactly Sorry. that's that's what i would like to have more knowledge in mm. uh because it's it's very bizarre because uh we'll take twitter facebook for example is like far bigger than twitter but oh. i have uh like a 3k following on twitter and like 12 people follow me on facebook and i i, I don't understand it i post the same things on both of them like what is the what you know that is the furry community at work 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, so one of the critical things, I actually tried promoting a few of my videos on Facebook when I started because uh -huh. I'm, not to be an ass, but I'm literally an expert on marketing. And uh -huh. I was like, okay, I'll get the highest return. I'll spend this much. This is the CPM. This is the bid model. Okay, it'll run for these times because they're critical. No, nothing. I was like, what yeah. the hell? And then I thought about it. And I'm like, Facebook is probably the wrongest platform for furries that has ever existed. Our community is niche, off to the side, uses avatars, was born out of the deviant deviant art age. You can see mm -hmm. that in the way fur affinity is critically built. And mm -hmm. my younger audience doesn't live here. I was like, oh. So I so I thought about it. I'm like, okay, so I can't do it like that. Critically, where our community lives is the new age lives on Twitter and Amino. Mm -hmm. um, the old age lives on affinity, Reddit, forums, um, you know, the old school stuff. And then, you know, the fringe ones that are gamers or, you know, are kind of like hybrids where they, they game and they also kind of interact with other furry gamers in that niche or like Twitch, Discord, and, you know, what have you. So, you right. know, if you're a furry gamer, marketing on Facebook is dumb. If you're yeah. a furry gamer, trying to get placements on Twitch is probably also dumb. But if you're a furry gamer and, you know, you, you, like, you can, I don't know how display marketing works, just to let you know. Like, if you can specifically indicate that that ad should only show up for, you know, Animal Crossing playthroughs or people who have indicated that, you know, furry is somewhere in their affiliation or you could target only videos that or that are like relevant to furries, then that's a little bit more effective because at least that audience cares and you're not just throwing spaghetti on the wall and getting like Lethius <laughs> here as being like, oh, where's this furry on here? Like just yeah, kind yeah, of tailoring yeah. it makes it really effective. And even on YouTube, using like hashtags and clickbait as much as I hate it and, you know, designing nice thumbnails does a lot of good. And I started with those and then I just got lazy and stopped doing it. Yeah, that's what I really need to know is the specifics of each platform. Like uh, I need to know more about Twitch because there are tags you can put in your mm -hmm. in your streams, right? and uh like furry or, or something i don't know if it works i need to know i don't know what tags to put on my youtube videos i usually put like five i know people who put like dozens but i put like five because i don't even know what to say uh like because there are tags that will get more traffic even if they have little to do with your video as long as it's kind of there or things you wouldn't think of you know like mm-hmm I don't know what to put. When I make a video about games, I don't know what tags to put. Do I put, like, games, gaming, gamer, video games? Like, do I just put all of them? Like, I, I you know, I have no idea what tags are going to make it seen. Yeah, sadly, I don't know Twitch as well. But I'm sure there's things you can do there that are very, very strategic and help with that. I mean, I yeah, know that yeah. they, they're more of the YouTube model of, like, overlays and you know, video screens and, like, doing leaderboards and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I don't know the specifics. Like, where I can help, though, is social, because I do know social very, very well and mm -hmm. exactly how to use things, especially if you don't have a gigantic media budget and you don't have, like, the ability to go, oops, I just dropped 100K and didn't get anything out of it. I guess I'll try something else. <laughs> like, most yeah, people can't. Yeah, that's what I, you know, I, I poke at it. At, uh, at different places with like maybe ten twenty five dollars here and there like i spent uh probably about 20 on facebook nothing came of it um i spent well i, I spent a lot on this e621 thing i think it was like 50 dollars for the uh, to, to commission the ad itself and then another like 25 to run it for like 10 days um, and nothing is really coming of it, oddly enough. You know, we, we talked about places where furries live, and I figured, like, porn sites would be a place, but apparently they not. They certainly live there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they exist there. Um, but I don't know, c certain furries, when they're in that space, aren't really looking to click on banners. They are pretty much there for the porn, so <laughs> yeah. getting their attention is a bit harder. Like, one of the biggest jokes is, um, you know, a lot of marketers don't want their stuff on porn sites. There's a real reason mm -hmm. for that because if you're going to a porn site, you're really not going to be looking at the banner ads. Let's be real. Like, you, okay. you, I don't even notice ads anymore if they mm -hmm. aren't 
actually interesting to me. Like I can scroll down YouTube and I literally have completely missed the fact that there's a promoted video sometimes because it just doesn't, it doesn't like appeal to me and it's not relevant to me at all. I mean, if it's right. Markiplier, I'll watch it. And if it's a suggested video of Majira, like, yeah, I'll totally watch that. But, mm-hmm. you know, this guy telling me five ways to, you know, make a man fall for you, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, right. That's yeah, not a yeah, thing exactly. That, I, that I'm trying to do with my life right now. So I'm like, okay. Mm. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about that. Uh, yeah. Context is a pretty big thing that a lot of people well, miss. You know, what I tried to do with the E621 ad was kind of make my dragon look kind of seductive, I guess. Well, that's smart. I don't know smart. if that's... Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was going for. But I just... It, it really isn't... It hasn't upped my traffic at all. Uh, if anything, I'm actually down a little bit. But I don't think that has to do with... The, I don't think the ad is, is no. causing my clicks to go down. That w- wouldn't make sense. I think it's just, you know... It, it's just proof that it's not really doing anything. The only people who have contacted me who have seen the ad are people who already knew about my channel, right? Yeah. Which tells me that uh, people are only clicking on it when they see, oh, hey, I know that dragon. And then, mm-hmm. and people who don't know who I am aren't clicking on it because they don't care, maybe? Yeah, well, it's also... it like It's, it's kind of like how a lot of people... What, what I usually like to do as a fun test is I go and look and see what's been written about for YouTubers or what's been mm-hmm. made recently about for YouTubers. And I'll check the views because I'm curious to see, like, how those do. And what I'll find a lot of the time is people are much more interested in hearing about their favorite YouTuber or their favorite person. And so if you say, like, my favorites, but you don't indicate who they are or give an allusion to it in the thumbnail the views will be critically lower than anyone who, you know, has maybe put in a strawberry to be cheeky or, you know, mm-hmm. has a picture of Pokari slapped across it. Like, those will drive more views, especially if you write, like, featuring Pokari or, you know, something that they know and they go, ooh, I know that, as opposed to my favorite for YouTubers, who could they be? And then the person looking <laughs> at it is just like, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> well, yeah, somebody... I would like to know more about, like, thumbnail analytics, because it's pretty much impossible to tell why a video did well. You know, was it the title? Was it the thumbnail? Was it the, was it the tags? Was it the actual content of the video? You know, it's it's hard to tell, because you can see what videos got more views, but you don't always know why. Yeah. Um, one thing that someone told me, uh, a, a bigger YouTuber, I can't remember who, said that with a thumbnail, what you want to do is is ask a question or have the viewer ask a question, right? Um, so I think that's what people are trying to do, you know, when they put, like, my favorite YouTuber, and then they just put, like, a like a silhouette with a yeah. question mark, is is people see it. But um, but you're saying it's better to kind of be upfront about it and, and not have as much mystery, just so people who are interested uh, will click on it, well, right, if they're interested in that person. You can do the mystery... But Mm -hmm. one of the things I also find, like, is a question, just a question mark may not be as interesting. But if you have a silhouette and there's some, like, little visual hint in the photo, like, say I wanted to say, mm, I I mean, granted, my fur YouTuber's video thumbnail is trash, so don't use that as an example. But, um, you know, having, like, a silhouette and then maybe, like, a little allusion to that person's character somewhere in the photo, like, if it's Pokari, having, like, a blue background or something or, you know, something that kind of hints like this might be them. You might want to find mm-hmm. out like could work. One, like I just Googled yours, your videos cause I'm a nerd. But one of the things I definitely noticed is also, you know, um, and my fans are going to hate this, but trigger imagery is also <laughs> very effective. So trigger imagery. Okay. So when you talk about Nazi furries and you have a big old flag slapped on the thumbnail, that's yep. going to get clicks. And then when you have yeah, the alt yeah. for logos just smacked up front, oh, yeah, that's going to get clicks, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I did it. Uh, yeah. People were, especially the, the Nazi furry one, and I put up that, like, furzy flag or whatever. People were like, oh, I wouldn't put my character 
on the on the flag and i thought about that and i was like you know yeah this this could be easily taken out of context someone could just take a screenshot of this and be like look Cotherix is a nazi for he's he put his character in front not of the flag, really. but I was thinking like... You have an angry dragon in front of a flag. Yeah. It's not like you're well, doing a high five to Fox World on the image. Right. <laughs> high five to Fox... Or shaking his hand like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I had to think about that. You know, do I want my, like, name associated with this? But I decided on it, and it actually worked out pretty well, because I think that the that the people who are accusing everyone of being a Nazi probably don't watch my videos in the first place. Which is a problem. Which is a... <laughs> Why do you say that? Uh, so I did, like, chat with some other people a while back, and, like, one of the biggest critiques, and I know it's one of our talking points, is drama. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. talking about drama and acknowledging drama. And the biggest issue we have is no one is going out to hear the other side, no matter how much they think the other side may not have a valid point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think I made a video recently about that specifically. Yeah, you did, and I did too. And it's just like, guys... Uh -huh. I fully appreciate that it is much easier and much less effort to tweet, like, punch all Nazi furs than to actually talk. I mean, granted, I slipped up on it because I actually got invited to speak with, all, like, the alt fur Discord chat. Mm -hmm. I was like, please do not put me in the Discord. What I would prefer <laughs> is to set up a proper one-on-one -on -one with whoever is running it and have a yeah. thoughtful conversation. I still owe them that, and I haven't done it yet. But mm -hmm. doing things like that are so much more effective because instead of, like, mob one versus mob two, you get a chance to actually level with a person and understand why they think that way. A huge issue is just assuming, oh, you have an armband, you're just a freaking Nazi. And when I made my video on that, I, I was just like, I don't think – where this is coming from is I don't think you realize how other people are interpreting it. Mm -hmm. And – the fact that you aren't willing to acknowledge that makes them less willing to acknowledge why you're doing it. So if neither of mm -hmm. you are willing to give either a chance to, like, listen, then nothing's going to change. Like, we're going to continue to have, like, Nazi furs showing up at cons and, like, people screaming about it and then Twitter wars because no one's actually talking. They're just megaphoning out to the abyss. And then anything that comes back that supports them they're all thrilled with and then anything that comes back that they don't like you have freaking block lists which is like what the f no you don't <laughs> block you talk to them at some point you will have to be with them at a con whether you know it or not mm -hmm. and because we all use freaking avatars you're not even gonna know half the time if they don't have a suit yeah, so at least make yeah. that interaction less awkward by just talking well, you wouldn't even know it too yeah. by just talking to them. You wouldn't even. People say, "Oh, they, they, you know, they're in the alt furry Discord. They're this horrible person." But like, you wouldn't know it by just talking to them. They're just a normal person. They just maybe have some more conservative views than you, or maybe they're just sick of like the social justice thing, so they joined it just to like have a place, you know, their own version of a safe space where they're not going to get all that people aren't going to get all pissy at them for I don't know not using the proper pronouns or something. So it's like these a lot of these people aren't like i kind of doubt that there really are even nazi furs in the fandom I, like i'm sure there's a couple of like kids who do it to be edgy and maybe some like i don't know i'm people sure who there's kind of i mean there's bigots everywhere there's racists uh -huh. everywhere there's feminists everywhere hello speaking <laughs> Like, there's, there's people who identify with each of their groups anywhere you go. Like, you could literally be at a gas station mm -hmm. and roll up next to a Confederate flag and a gay guy filling their gas station at the same time. Like, it, it, it's mm -hmm. a thing. It happens. I think one thing that, like, the furry community is just, like, over-embellishing and emphasizing is, you know, the Nazi furs. And, like, I mean, they're, they're Nazis and they're also furries. And, yeah, they're maybe in the alt-fur discord. And that's... Mm -hmm led to some really spicy messages being um, leaked out that are really mm -hmm. concerning, but no one's, like, even all furry doesn't really want to acknowledge that. So, you know, they're like, oh, you're accusing us of being Nazi furs. I'm like, no, you might have some Nazis in your midst, and you should confront and deal with it and talk about it and, you know, separate yourself from that if that's not what you're about. 
and t- yeah. like discuss because otherwise that is going to be an assumption if you don't address it the rest of the fandom sure as shit will and if you know the rest of the fandom is telling the narrative and you're not even trying to talk and you're just shutting people down by being like oh my god you like triggered liberal oh like look at all these crybabies like pointing the finger Get the- I mean, you're not really giving them anything else to work with here right yeah yeah i i've had a couple of people from the alt furry uh i don't know not just the discord but like the whole art alt furry movement if you want to call it that uh yeah. want to talk to me but they don't want to talk to me one-on-one they want me to like join their mm-hmm. um their thing and i don't really want to because i know it's just going to be a dog pile so uh yeah it's like i don't yeah, I, I don't want to jump into you know a setup where I'm trying to talk to you guys intellectually. Like I'm, I'm a feminist, bisexual, extremely liberal Trump hating furry. But if I, if I want to talk to one of you guys, I'm going to have those hats on, but I'm not going to be megaphoning what I think at you. I want to understand why did you start it? Mm -hmm. What, what, like, what does this group critically want to achieve? Like why, why do you permit this to happen in your chat? If you know, This is not something you want the group to stand for. Like, I want to know that. But if all you're going to do is um, freaking insult me and jump on me and, like, not even try to acknowledge things that I'm saying, that's an issue. Like, that's a very big issue. And it's not going to be really worth either of our times because you guys are just having a good troll sesh. And I'm trying to understand why you guys even exist. And you're not really giving me any reasons. (laughs) You know, I'm not entirely sure they know why they exist. I think they yeah. mostly uh, are, are people who are kind of burnt out on the whole um, social justice well, a lot of <laughs> Social justice thing, yeah. Uh, it, and just the general, like, furry atmosphere is has always been very liberal. I mean... When I was when I first joined the the fandom, when I was like fourteen years old, I I had never heard the term social justice. I don't even think. Man, that was that was like fifteen years ago. So uh, I don't even know if it was really a thing that was being talked about yet. Like people would say, uh, you know, uh, political correctness, but that was really only in uh, like the uh, big businesses and uh, and like politicians that were talking about political correctness. Like normal, like a- everyday people didn't even like think about it much. And uh, but when I went to furry forums and things people were so politically correct i always had to be walking on age uh, i always had to be walking on eggshells i did not understand it people would be mad at me for the weirdest things i, I didn't understand it and it wasn't until you know like 10 15 years later till now that i realized what was going on yeah but i realized just how liberal the 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 furry fandom is as a whole and that's why I kind of understand this alt furry thing because it's it's people who are just kind of burnt out on that. They're burnt out on walking on eggshells, so they make this group that's that's like their place where you know they don't have to do that. And I think that's the main reason they exist. It's not to like be Nazis or something. No, certainly isn't. I'm sure. Oh. Why why would you even want that? Like, I mean, I I guess certain people wanted that, but like, why would you even want that? I mean, part of the Part of the reason why I really freaking wait so, wish someone would just retire SJW is mm-hmm. because that word literally dates back so far back. And I I mean, I could Google it because I don't fully remember, but I think it dates back like previous to like the Internet, like social justice was justice at a societal level when we needed it, when there was racism, when there was mm-hmm. all that stuff like that actually mattered. I don't think it ever like it didn't get um, manipulated until the dawn of Twitter. I I believe the first okay. time that ever appeared was specifically Twitter. And if I had to take a guess, I would guess it's Gamergate that basically skyrocketed that term to where we see mm-hmm. it now. It wasn't really a thing because the internet wasn't really a thing. And political correctness was the main term because that was the gripe at the time. You know, I don't want to be, mm-hmm. I don't want to be politically correct. And, you know, people were like, well, you know, we would kind of like you to be politically correct because, you know, we've just achieved all these things with our social justice to right certain wrongs and you playing it off like it's nothing does kind of hurt a little bit because we've put all this effort into it to try to fix something. And then when mm-hmm. 
you know, when someone tries to do a critical analysis of something that happened in their telegram or something that's happening with the alt-right we see right now, throwing SJW at the person pretty much it's it's dumb because it's like okay no they're not, they're not campaigning against you they're not trying to fight what you're saying in many cases they are just offering a different opinion with evidence and if your response is to be like oh easily triggered like libby sjw i'm like okay like what constructive did you just add to that conversation nothing okay good <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a dismissive pejorative, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much. And I I'm guilty of it in the past too, like kind of just calling people SJWs. Like some of my older videos, oh, like I know, videos I from them. a year or two ago, are kind of like that. Um, I've watched. That. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, so, yeah. But but it is. It's a dismissive pejorative. It's the same as calling someone a Nazi, basically. Yeah. Uh, when they they do something you don't like. And that's unfortunate. Because you're, you're uh, weakening two critical words that had a lot of meaning, which is really, really awful. I mean, well, I, I, Nazi, yeah. Nazi uh, should be a terrible, terrible thing. The Nazis were terrible, right. terrible people. But to just casually throw it now, man, you are, you are taking the meaning out of one of the most horrific words in our, in our lexicon. Like, that is just... The fact that in a few years, like, little five-year-olds will yell Nazi at each other and it won't mean anything terrifies me. Yeah, that's uh, that's a problem. And, you know, the same sort of thing happens with, like, uh, people calling each other racist. Uh, that doesn't happen as much anymore. It's now – now the the new word is Nazi, like you said. But yeah. for a while it was racist and, and xenophobic and Islamophobic and all this shit. And it was like – just calling everybody that that had like a, a, a slight opinion that maybe wasn't quite as liberal and it was like you're taking agency away from those words and making them meaningless mm -hmm. it's like now 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 it doesn't matter now people don't care if they get called a nazi because like doesn't care any you meaning you could call someone yeah it doesn't care any meaning and you could call someone like an actual nazi a nazi and people would be like oh he you know you're just you're just saying that you don't mean anything by it but and it, so it's like well yeah it, it it's meaningless now thanks you you've ruined a word now what do we call people and the same thing bigot racist you can't even you can't even call out like legitimate racism or bigotry yeah uh, the words don't because, have any value anymore yeah, the words are are yeah they don't mean anything so it's just like okay well good <laughs> good job there yeah it's like even uh, in my own background like I do identify as feminist but uh -huh. the way I identify is not the way that most of the world would think of it like i don't hate mm -hmm. men obviously like i don't want to over well i want to overthrow the, patri the patriarchy it would be great if you know everything was pretty much equal and i'm not necessarily campaigning to have things changed i want things maintained i want things to mm -hmm. continue but then you have like the tumblr error what where feminism is now a joke and third wave feminists are the favorite thing to make mashups of on YouTube of like angry yeah. women screaming. And that's critically something I don't identify with. And it's like, wait a minute. All right. I'm going to be mad as shit if they overturn something that directly affects me. But uh -huh. I'm not going to go to a rally and just scream at you. I, most of the time, I will just go and talk to you. If, I, if you're wearing a, a MAGA hat, I would like to know why. Like, why? Uh -huh. If you're wearing like a Hillary shirt, even after she lost, I would love to know why. Like, I uh -huh. am not interested in belittling or insulting your intelligence. I'm just, I'm genuinely curious, like, why you're doing that. And in many cases, like, when people hear, like, oh, well, you know, Rage is also a feminist, the first reaction is, oh, God, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't want to talk with her then. That's going to be a waste of my time. It's like, wait, no, like, I, mm, I'm not going in with, like, I'm going in with some bias, but I am going to listen to you. Like, come on, dude. Mm -hmm. So even that word yeah. got completely obliterated. So, like, that makes me angry, too. And I think it's so pronounced in the furry community because we're already an offshoot of the mainstream. So we're, we're not the mainstream anymore or at all. We might be. Who knows? With Walmart making heads. But, you know, we're, we already <laughs> kind of feel put in a box. And then we mm -hmm. want to make more little boxes so we can really, really self-identify. And what tends to happen is rather than people walking over and being like, so why do you prefer he as a pronoun? 
people are like, uh-huh. oh, God, ugh, sorry, I've messed up your pronouns. Did I just assume your gender and species and, like, color scheme? It's like, no, no, no. Like, ugh, God, I hate that. It's like, no, no, I'm genuinely curious why you identify as he. Oh, because of this yeah. background that is genuinely fascinating. Cool. Yeah, I'll, no, you're, I'll go with you. You're, you're right. That's uh, it's hard to have a conversation, hard to have a real conversation uh, with much of anyone. Especially when furries don't want to talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it's just a furry thing. It seems to be a a kind of like a partisan politics thing and a next gen you know, people thing. Are yeah people are so divided they don't feel the need to talk and part of it is because i don't know if they have anything to say i don't know if they know why they believe the things they do they they just know that they're mad at the other side Mm -hmm. you know or part of it is because uh they like their groups and i'm sure you know this as as like a uh a, a more liberal fairy like you have to kind of walk on eggshells a bit because you don't want to say something that's going to upset the other like liberal furries right um i'm sure at one point when i was younger i might have but i think also Mm. with age i just don't care anymore so Mm. i (laughs) i can tweet something and you know Mm. i what was it we had that thing with huskoon that happened and i critically disagree i'm not familiar with that well, you have some reading that'll be fun later. Um, <laughs> okay. Basically, it was another incident of someone being accused of doing a thing, and I obviously would normally do a video for that and go into detail, but my computer's bricked, so I didn't. Instead, I tweeted, uh-huh. like most of our community does. So I read through everything I could find, and what I critically found was that there was an incident where this guy was accused of grooming kids for that sort of thing, sex. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were a lot of allegations and apparently there were receipts and I I haven't seen them, but one thing that was making me extremely angry was how people were reacting. So one user drops the bombshell of, you know, this, that we suspect that this person is doing this. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, asking people like, if you know anything, come forward, which I understand the reasoning behind, but (sighs) The thing that made me angry is, like, if all of this proves to be false, that's a reputation torched. But if it proves to be true, that's not the first course of action that should be done. Like, I was speaking to two people who are actually on, like, boards of cons, and, you know, it was just like, look, I don't know if this is true, but, you know, I would fully hope that if it is true that actions will be taken – So that this person does not come to one of your events to potentially harm people. Like, I would hope that is happening. And one of the things that I've seen happen in the community is, you know, when these accusations come out is you you get the two camps. Like, the screw him camp and the screw you camp. Just the, Uh oh, well, you know, this is relevant and I, he's my friend, so he's fine. I'm like, okay. And then the other side that's like, yeah. Screw facts. It must be true. Rah! Everybody rally and hate Spawn. I'm like, oh, guys, come on. So when that happened, yeah. I basically it... was like, here is what I know. Here is what I think. Take it as you will, but don't lie and throw, like, random bullshit at this. If you have evidence, go process it legally. Get that receipt, because that's a damn good one. And then present it politely to the con you'd like to attend as evidence. And yes, actually, this is how it works. If you bring in, like, certified legal stuff and you don't want it to happen at your con and you present it in a nice manner, most of the time, it will be handled. Yeah, that's... You you can't... (laughs) People, that's what people do. That's what I was talking about earlier with this. People don't want there to be legal recourse for you know pedophiles and things they just want to ruin their reputations on social media and it doesn't make any sense it's not even at that point it's not even about uh like helping those kids it's not even about preventing them from from you know doing whatever they do it's about uh having some kind of like moral authority over them and it's really kind of sickening Yeah, I mean, because what I would love to see happen is, you know, when that happens and we find out a bombshell, um, you know, what we all do is we as a community 
file a petition. That would be very much more effective than tweet storming. You're certainly allowed and you're certainly capable of tweet storming how you feel about it. And I yeah. get that. Like, I was one of those assholes who tweeted furiously that I was mad as shit for the results of the, re uh, the election. I do have the right to do that. And I yeah. was pretty angry. And I do occasionally get sassy and think, say things that are just really rude. But at the same time, like... When something like that happens and it's yeah and that and that, that happens, it's just like, dude, you, you have to at least at least like file a petition. At the very least, if you don't want to go through all the hoops and ladders and you're afraid that legal fees will burn you out, like at least start with a petition or a politely worded email to con staff or you know, if you're at a school and somebody has an incident with you i know most schools are kind of shitty about this and you know nothing always like things don't always happen but you know at least try to go through the process first and if it really doesn't work then start a campaign on twitter like once you've hit all of those like those blockers and you can't get it done like then by all means tag in the community and ask for the support but like don't witch hunt <laughs> because it right. just it makes it harder for when there is actually a terrible person out there actually needing to be dealt with because then everyone dismisses it as oh the sjw's are triggered again i'm like mm. yeah no exactly that's what we were talking about earlier you can't call out actual something actually going on but i would say social media is not the place to take it at all just report it to the authorities if you have actual evidence of something illegal going on why even go to social media report it to the authorities and show them the evidence that's what you need to do yeah and then if after you have all that evidence, con staff still does not want to remove them or ban them from the con, then voice your opinion. Be like, okay, guys, we have done all of the legal things. Please join me in signing this petition for this person to not be allowed back at the con for very valid reasons, not just because uh, I don't like their armband. Uh, yeah, I don't know, though. I don't know if, if taking it to a petition or, or social media is really is really what needs to happen i mean because at that point you're kind of pressuring or you're trying to pressure a a private thing a private like organization into uh into doing something yeah i mean you that's know, the it's it's yeah. okay to make them aware of it be like hey we have evidence this person is you know using your convention to uh like lure in kids or something that's perfectly fine but making it a big public thing over twitter or a petition i i don't agree with that yeah i mean i i would only do it in certain situations where i mean i know cons are private entities but if if it's a situation where you know that con by not doing anything is kind of promoting that, then I'd just be like, ooh, I don't know if I support that. And the two ways you could interact with that situation is you could choose not to go, um, which is fully mm -hmm. valid, and a lot of people chose not to go to certain cons because of that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I still have a little bit of the social justice in me, so when I see that and I see that being allowed on a mass scale, like my first move is always to petition because I feel like it's the most neutral of the ways you can be loud and obnoxious on Twitter. But understandably, yeah, I get your point. Like, it's not really on them to do that. But uh -huh. it could be it's... to the actual hotel for allowing them to run it like that. The, the problem that I have with it is because if you don't have compelling evidence uh, for the police, then you probably don't have very compelling evidence uh, at all. And trying to to make it and putting it as a petition or talking about it on social media and turning it, it does turn it into a witch hunt. And what if that person didn't actually do that? Mm. You know, that's the problem. It's that, and this is a problem I see with a lot of people, a lot of the more liberal people, is that they are willing to condemn uh, an innocent person. Uh, they'd rather do that uh, instead of, you know, wait until uh you know you innocent until proven guilty and risk letting a, a guilty person go yeah i mean i certainly wouldn't go to petition unless you have the factual backing uh -huh. and and the other thing about that is you know we're, we're talking about we're talking about facts here um but a lot of times people 
will have their opinions. They'll they'll have some piece of evidence, and their interpretation of it is is what uh, it's not the actual facts that they're presenting. It's their interpretation of facts. Like uh, for example, we can look at the alt furry Discord and some of the like you're talking about the spicy uh, things that have come out of there. Um, there are like shit posting channels in that Discord where. The only reason they exist is for people to make racist jokes, right? And when you take that, a screenshot of that, out of context, yeah, um, then it just looks like people in the in the alt free Discord are just spouting racism constantly. But it's like that's not the case. And so your interpretation of that uh, of those facts is that well, these people are racist when it's not really that. I mean, we're talking about like twelve year olds just being edgy. Right? Yeah, that's 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 what it is. It's not. It doesn't have to do anything with racism. They probably don't even know half the shit they're saying. They see it on memes. It's just... So it's like that... So we have that. That's a problem. And if we try to take this sort of, like, justice into our own hands, uh, that's what will end up happening, is our interpretation of evidence might not uh, might not be the best, might not be what's actually happening. And then we've witch-hunted someone who... We've condemned an innocent person. Yeah, the one thing that I would love to see if someone does try to do a, I went to Alt Furry Discord and this is what I found. I see lots of screenshots, mm. I see lots of statics, but like I'm in tech, I use Jing, so I screen record a lot. So mm -hmm. if I critically see that you know people are being god awful people, um, I would literally just go through the whole thing and Jing it, Jing it, and be like, all right. Here is video of me literally scrolling through, looking at all of the text posts. Like th this is, this is what they are about. Here's all of the, the channels, and now you can clearly see that like this one is specific to this and represents a offshoot of the main. Is the main critically corrupt? I don't know. Probably not. They seem mm -hmm. fine. But if you look specifically mm -hmm. at who is posting these edgy posts and thinking it's like funny to you know make like Nazi references or racist or like anything else in that kind of vein. Then instead, what you can do is you can identify and be like, okay, alt furry as an entire group may be a little misguided, but the critical issues here lie here, 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 and here. So this is what maybe they internally need to address, and then that would be more constructive than being like, oh my god, someone voted to gas everyone. It's like yeah. One mm -hmm. person. Where is the screenshot where the rest yeah. of the Discord goes? What? <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. One person or the same kind of like five. Like we're talking about five kids posting all this shit over and over. Like that's what it is in my Discord. Is we have I have a, a shit posting channel where people just kind of post memes and a lot of the memes are like kind of racist or whatever. And it's like the same five people who who post those over and over again, whereas there are over a thousand people in my Discord, and those you know five people posting kind of racist memes are not should not be used to judge the entire Discord. Yeah, sure. just like the occasional times when a furry gets in some deep shit and gets arrested, mm -hmm. should not be the standard by which the rest of us are judged forever and ever. Like if I. Oh, if yeah. I had a wow. nickel for every bestiality <laughs> comment on my my freaking channel, oh my god, I would have enough money to quit and move to Aruba. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, god, yeah. yeah. It's a uh, yeah. That is that's uh, almost why I try I, I to made... downplay the porn aspect. Like, trust me, I know it's there. In my circle of friends, it's not a ton of us that are into it, but. Oh, God, for that to be the only thing the community is ever brought up about is just so mm -hmm. frustrating. It's a big community you know, of I porn. I th <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, did you see my uh, The Truth About Yif video? Yes, I did, actually. And would you agree with that, that for most furries, there is a sexual aspect? I would rephrase it a bit. I agree for most mm -hmm. furries, when they begin... They either enter with or without a sexual interest. I entered mm -hmm. without. Um, what I would say is the more you are exposed to the community and the more you kind of understand what about it, about it you specifically like, it'll determine mm -hmm. exactly how you choose to interact with the community. I think when many people join, you may have some underlying sexual interest because you were exposed to something that formed a connection when you were young. But it may mm -hmm. not still be sexual now. 
So when I think of people like having a sexual interest, it might have been an interest, but it may not necessarily still be one. So like I entered, had no interest, but you know, I do appreciate lewd art. I do enjoy Mm -hmm. some of the safe for work art that is drawn. Am I like sexually attracted to it? Not really. I mean, I just think the line work is really well done and it was shaded beautifully. I mean, there's certain yeah. animations where I'm like, this does nothing for me, but I got to commend the guy. This is some damn good CGI. <laughs> the art's good. Yeah. Like, shit, dude, if you applied yeah. this to not porn, you would be making the best. <laughs> oh, the my gosh. I know. I, I think about that all the time. Like, there's such good artists, and, like, they do porn, and they, they sometimes they make plenty of money off of their, uh, you know, their furry porn. But then I think, like, you could work for, like, like an art, like a, you know, what, what would it be? Like a, um, a place that does art for, like, the covers of books and for art for websites oh and games. And you could make, you could have like a, like a huge career off of your art. Your art is so good, but you're making furry porn instead. It's like, uh, but you know, I guess if that's what they enjoy. I mean, if that's what they like about the fandom. And in many cases, some of those artists do actually have like art, like art careers outside of it. Like one of my friends is a Mm -hmm. graphic designer for a, um, like a marketing agency, but she will draw the Mm -hmm. veiniest dragon dick you ever did see in her free time. (laughs) And you're just like, Uh but okay <laughs> i'm just like why <laughs> why did you spend 42 hours on the veins and that literally that piece of marketing material you just produced took you 10 minutes like what <laughs> if you put that yeah, into, yeah. if you if you made it a little more equal you probably be making a lot more money but yeah like yeah i mean for me there is probably a slight sexual interest but it's it's not like mm-hmm. i would not go out there and say like i'm in the fandom for porn i'm not mm-hmm. Well, I think most people yeah. wouldn't, uh, you know, not not even me. And I, I'm pretty, like, I guess, sex positive, and I talk about porn a lot. And, and one of my, I guess, goals as a furry YouTuber is to try to, like, normalize porn a little bit or at least get people to understand that almost everyone else is into the porn too so they don't have to like be so secretive and, like, feel like they're, like they're part of the bad side of the community, you know? Because... That's one of the things that was always like kind of like ingrained into me uh, because I grew up as like a uh, my parents were, you know, fundamentalist Christian sort of like porn and sex are bad uh, sort of deal. And it always it, it like really kind of hurt my I, I feel like it hurt my emotional and sexual development, uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm a furry in the first place, because I I, I, ha- I I know, and I can't prove it, but I know that one of the reasons why I'm a furry is because I was you know, always told that sex is bad. Don't look at porn. Porn is bad. But then I would see, um, like, these characters, you know, like Renamon or Crystal from Star Fox, and I'd be like, well, you know, they're, they're kind of sexy. I don't have to, like, feel bad about having <laughs> sexual thoughts for them because they're, like, cartoons, right? Mm-hmm. You know? And they, they were and, designed and to be that way. I mean, yeah. they're from Japan. <laughs> yeah, no I mean... <laughs> one of the things that like a lot of people like I've actually heard from non furries is people being like, look, uh-huh. I'm not furry, but like Lola Bunny was sexy. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. that was the point. Like that's why that's yeah, yeah, why yeah. she was drawn that way. Like they weren't stupid. They obviously knew that they were trying to reach out to you know, like those younger kids and hook them in. And one really easy way to do it is use like characters and animals that they understand at the time, like. A bunny and then give it a new context that they don't understand like boobs so combining mm-hmm. those two like it gets you interested and you want to know more about it and then you end up buying like a bazillion like lola bunny things like done like anything that disney has ever done has been done like that so mm-hmm. for like for people to be like oh, i don't understand like uh, like why like the fur like the fan like there's not that much porn in the fandom I'm like i mean there is a shitload of porn in the fandom but I don't think, like, most people in the fandom are, like, out there gunning to get, like, as many dicks as they can. Like, it's probably not like that. But... Yeah. Like, when I yeah, say I would agree. Like, it's... when I go on my video and I'm like, it's not most, like, this is not the entire community. Like, it's not most of the community. It's a smaller part of the community. What I should have uh-huh. contextualized it with is it's a smaller part of the community that is exclusively in this fandom because it is the only thing that sexually satisfies them. That is pretty false like there's not that many people that are like that yeah 
yeah, I, I, I suppose I, you know, I, I can't do any sort of, I can't make up a statistic on the spot. Um, you know, everything I say is just going to be anecdotal or, oh, like I said in my video, I had some research done through the IARP. So we can see that most furries are at least somewhat yeah. sexual, but you know, what does that mean for each like person? What does you know, that when, mean like in said, three it, years when everyone, everyone's kid has watched Zootopia and suddenly discovers our fandom again, how much mm. does that change? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We have um, all this exposure these days. Zootopia was a big one. You know, there are people who uh, don't consider themselves furries, but they have a, uh, a zoo-sona because they like to role-play as a character mm -hmm. in, like, the Zootopia universe, right? But they don't consider, them, consider themselves furries, even though that's, like, literally what a furry is. It goes right <laughs> you know, back to is... the word devaluing. If the word furry has just been reduced down to the point of like yiffy boys in pup gear that like bonking in fursuits and go out of their way to find as much smut as they can on e261 i think it is then yeah uh -huh. people are not going to want to be called furry they really aren't going to want that and that's that's terrible because it's a great community we, we have yeah. some shitheads here and there and yeah there are some people <laughs> that you know really take it to 11 with how much they want to get into their fursona, getting into other fursonas. But, I mean, that shouldn't be the definition. And that's, like, when I did the parents' video, that's why I downplayed it so hard, because if this young kid is loving what they're seeing and they are so excited to join this group of people that they didn't know existed, if mom Googles furry and the first thing she finds is just the lewdest of lewd porn... <laughs> That's the only context she's going to have. <laughs> she's going to be like, oh, you're yeah. into dragon fucking. Well, yeah. no, you can't join the community. <laughs> it's just like, all right, well, we yeah. tried. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a problem. And something I haven't really talked about much, um, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with mentioning. I just, I don't know. It, it's, is that, you know, when I, it can be kind of a dangerous place for, um, for kids, the furry community. Yeah. And because when I, I can only speak from my like uh, personal experience, but when I joined the community, when I was about 14, there were people uh, over some, you know, under 18, but a lot over 18, like in their twenties who were trying to get me to do sexual things with them and not just online. They wanted me to, you know, meet up uh, to do like sexual things with them uh, in real life and you know I was 14 or 15 at the time and uh, that's a very real thing uh, I would say I I don't really like uh, it, it makes me kind of uncomfortable when there are furries who are kids because I know just how sexual the community can be and how sexual some people are uh, and so, yeah, you know, you, you, like with that video, I watched that video you were talking about um, the furry community is like not that bad of a place. Like, I don't know. I, it might be. It might be. It might be that bad of a place. And it's not everyone. That's the thing. It's not everyone. It, but it only takes that 5% of, of like sexual predators to make it a dangerous place. Yeah. And there's also so much toleration that or there's a lot of tolerance that goes on for some of that behavior. And mm -hmm. I know that there's, like, certain kinks within the fandom that are pretty exclusive and, like, certain things that, you know, might appear in art and somehow normalize it. And mm -hmm. that, to me, just mm, it grinds my gears because, yes, I fully understand that, like, baby furs and diaper furs and pups and, like, all of that is, like, a thing. But when those mm -hmm. were critically created, they were not created by children. These were people who wanted to express a different outlet and used that imagery to have it. But with so many young furs coming in, I can understand, like, if you want to be a cute puppy for a day and, like, be a child again, and that's fine. Or, you know, if you need to be an adult baby or a furry adult baby to just, you know, completely, like, disconnect from your adult life that is stressful and shitty and hard fine mm -hmm. but like drawing porn with younger characters or drawing those characters in a sexual situation or you know 
promoting that while I think like it quote unquote, it's just art. Like I understand that vein that also leads to a dangerous, tricky situation where it's so normalized that then when people try to call it out and police it and like critically say, no, like this is leading to behaviors that are genuinely not good for the next generation of furries that are coming in for people to go like, Oh, it's just art. I'm like, "Mm, I think we need need to have a critical discussion guys. Like, it's just oh, art, yeah, definitely. but I think we need to address, like, the elephant in the room here. That art has been around, and it's normalized something that should not be normalized. Yeah, yeah, that's... We we definitely need to have a, some kind of discussion about that. Um, and a lot of people will outright... Bo- uh, a lot of people, or a lot of websites, will outright ban, like, cub porn. And I don't know if that's the right route to go... Uh, like I said, we need to have a discussion about it. Like, is it, is this sort of porn uh, going to promote pedophilia, uh, you know, or is it just art? Is it just a person's outlet? Maybe it's helping them. Maybe they are, uh, you know, they have those pedophilic thoughts, but because they have this art, they don't feel the need to act out on them, you know? So maybe it might be helping in a way, and we need to have a discussion about that. I, I did make a video a while back about pedophilia, and that I, I did bring that up, but I didn't go into uh, as much depth uh, as I would when it comes to, um, and, and not just when it comes to art, and not just furries either. Well, yeah, not not just furries, um, but I mean, if we're gonna stay within the furry community, it's not just the baby fur thing. It's also like you know there are like rape fetishes, and uh, I I don't even know, like death murder fetishes there's, and, and, and all kinds yeah, of things like that there's gore and, and like the whole nine yards with our uh-huh. community like when we when we want to get really into a kink wow we really go there yeah and and i just there needs to be a discussion I, and i want to make a video about it but i'm pretty sure youtube wouldn't approve of that well you just wouldn't get any revenue but you could certainly make it <laughs> i mean i've been yeah. i've actually that's the other thing that's been driving me crazy is i have literally gotten demonetized because fur is one of my tags 15 different times oh oh yeah yeah definitely so too. just for, speaking to like the negative impact the that title. has like i make a video on how to fix your resume which literally has nothing in it about porn dicks inflation mm-hmm. any of that nonsense and it got demonetized because furry is in the title and that's the damage it's doing like that's the long-term damage of you know not having a discussion, not like as a community going, okay, guys, how do we want to handle this? Because again, nobody wants to fucking talk about it. And, you know, then what happens is our community gets devalued as a result. Like we have amazing people in the community that do freaking amazing things and should be celebrated. But, you know, if they go to make a real, like Jid Cody, for example, made a beautiful animation for Midwest Fur Fest. And I have to wonder if the fact that he was a furry or maybe had some tag in there, I wonder if his video got demonetized or I wonder how many comments called him a nasty dog fucker. Mm-hmm. And here he is making like a really beautiful piece and it's, it's kind of like shat on because of some of the things that, you know, we've kind of allowed to happen and ignored and not talked about and tried to, you know, fix or at least get a good PR front to just be like, hey guys, like, we understand what we do is really fucking weird, but we actually do have some good people in here that do contribute great things. So, you know, before you type dog fucker, maybe like do a little bit of research. I know that's asking a lot for a YouTube commenter, but like, (laughs) well, most of the people who are saying like dog fucker, kill yourself for a fag are like 12 anyway. So we don't even need to worry about them too much they're not like real people yet i guess yeah i guess like the fear for me is like that that next like one of the things that was crazy for me to me is like there's this one like fursuit maker that i think i commissioned her when she was 16 she made Mm -hmm. heli at 16 and it was the most bizarre experience because she had the rare incident of her parents were completely fine they saw it as a great outlet for making art and crafting and gaining some actually good business skills and my Mm -hmm. suit paid for her college tuition oh wow i mean not all of it it was it was a partial but like it it went towards her college tuition i'm like that's great that should be celebrated we Mm -hmm. need more of this but what will happen is you know when that kid who is a rock star artist and 
you know, discovered that, you know, Pokari is on YouTube and is talking about all these great topics and they see themselves in that YouTuber, which is why I think fur tubers probably succeed more because you don't have a face. You don't have a human face there. So you can kind of see yourself in that animal. Or even when you have a dragon still, you can be like, Oh, okay. I identify like, I don't know you. I don't know you as a human, but you know, I could see myself in that when their parents go to either like figure out what it is about it that they like, the thing that they are going to critically run into is the porn, is the pedophilia allegations, is the bestiality allegations. They're going to look and see that, you know, we had a Nazi suitor arrested at MFF. They're going to look and see that, you know, one of our very prominent, like, videographers, like RC Fox, who I think also DJs, you know, was brought, was convicted, well, not convicted, he was alleged to have a shitload of kid porn or that, you know, there are people grooming others for sexual favors. They're going to see that and just be like, oh, my God, no. And it will deny mm-hmm. another beautiful creative mind from joining our community and making the next fucking awesome species, maybe writing an amazing, like, lore behind it like Sergals have, even though they're trash. Um, and then... <laughs> Hey, I like circles. I, I do. I just love saying circles are trash. Um, <laughs> but like, there's like the next Zootopia could emerge from our community, and they're getting snipped like right at the cusp, almost like someone mm-hmm. who is discovering about themselves that like they're gay or they don't agree with their religion, and you know have found meaning in a new one. Like something that could benefit mm-hmm. that kid is getting like cut off, and that sucks. And I want that to stop. Mm, yeah. Sorry, I just ranted for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I see, I see what you're saying, and I, I wish we had more time to, uh, to discuss these things. There's, there's so many things that I'd like to talk to you about because you probably, uh, are, are one of the more like liberal people I've had on here. So, uh, it, it, there's a lot of stuff I do want to talk to you about, but um, we're well over the hour mark here, and uh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got carried away a little bit and so i think that we need to you know draw it to a close um unfortunately so uh you know before we go is there anything any little thing that you want to say any like thing that you want to plug or, or you know advertisement or something um well you know i i'm obviously not making videos right now but you know come 2018 i do i do have a lot of really interesting content planned you know, I did get that critique on my channel, so I'm taking it to heart and working on editing, and I do have a new camera in the works and all that. Um, you know, one thing that I, I really hope other people who watch um, your channel or my channel and, you know, maybe might be interested in making their own content, I, I really would encourage you to start and, like, watch other tubers and, like, get some ideas. And, you know, if there is something that you don't see being talked about or covered that, you know, you feel strongly about, just do it. Like, even if, even if your opinion is very radical and does not align with, you know, liberal furries like me or conservative furries, like, you know, kind of everybody else in that group. Um, if it's something that you feel strongly enough about, even if someone doesn't agree with you, just do it, argue your point really clearly and, you know, try to do it the most justice you can. And hopefully people will watch it and get a little bit more perspective and learn. And that's, that's really all I want from anyone that watches my channel is I just want you to learn. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I totally agree there. You know, we got to watch, uh, we got to look at other people's perspectives and, uh, be, try to be as informed about things as we can, even if it's a controversial topic. Um, but yeah, uh, well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Any any time you want to talk, man. Yeah, uh, we'll definitely do this again, and we'll have more discussions, or maybe we'll have like a uh, a secret like long discussion that I'll just post the audio to on a, <laughs> on like a patron only thing or something. For uh, sure. See, that's how you, that's how you advertise the Patreon. Ah, anyway, there's a good plug. Uh, Get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, uh, and uh, I will talk to you later. And everyone at home. Thanks for watching. All right. Thank you so much.